Welcome to the Laser Channel. I'm your host, Greg, and in this video, I'm making this round mandala mirror. I'll show you step-by-step -step on where I find the free art files to two different ways of centering the laser over this round piece of glass. This project is being made on the Atomstack A20 Pro featuring the 20 watt laser module. This machine is capable of not only engraving glass, but 40 plus other materials. Stay tuned as I show you step by step how to make this project. This is a fun, great project that doesn't require a whole lot of materials to complete. The first thing I'll need is a mirror and something to hold the mirror in place in the work area. So either some painter's tape or some magnetic strips that work very well with my magnetic honeycomb. Next thing that we'll need is some type of uh, measuring instrument or ruler to measure the diameter of the mirror and some paint, either some spray paint or some brush on tempera paint to paint on the backside of the mirror to keep that mirror from uh, peeling out in years to come. And the last piece that I'll need is this piece of sheet metal that came with my honeycomb. I'll place this in the work area underneath the laser. That way any laser beams that pass through the mirror will not damage my table. Optional things for this project can include some white copier paper. We'd use this to cut a circular template out to find the exact center of the mirror. And for this project, I will be using this magnetic honeycomb in my tool area. With the materials list covered, I'll start by going in the computer to find an image to put on the mirror. With my web browser open, I go to Pixabay. Pixabay is a great resource for free images and artwork for your projects. For a mandala mirror, I'll simply type in mandala and hit enter. As I scroll down, I get all of this artwork. Some of it's black and white and others are in color. For our project, I wanna use a black and white vector image. Vector images with our laser, of course, offer us the options to make either an engraving of our project or cut it out as a line. And I'll scroll down until I find a piece of artwork that I like. I like this nice round one here with a lot of lines in it. I'll click on that. And you'll see that there's no extra uh, pop-up ads or anything that you get when you click on an artwork that you like. I just click on free download and I want the vector graphic option. I've already logged in so I don't have a login screen. And that's our artwork. Our files downloaded. And that's the first part of the project is to locate and pick our artwork that we would like for our mirror. The second part of this project is putting our round mirror in the workspace and then centering up the laser perfectly centered up on that mirror. There's two different ways that this can be done. You can use a template or if you're using Lightburn, there is a find center feature just for round objects like we're doing today. For the paper template option, this is where the ruler comes into play. I just need to accurately measure the diameter of the mirror and the mirror looks like it is going to be 114 millimeter diameter. Let's go into Lightburn and make a template. Inside Lightburn, I'll pick circle and I'll click and drag and to make a perfect circle, I'll hold the shift key. And now I have that perfect circle I have my padlock locked and I believe I said 114 millimeters. And now that's perfectly resized. I'm going to change that from layer 00 to 01. Switch back over to my mouse cursor and place that somewhere about here. With a circle drawn, I'll zoom in on the screen and draw a crosshair. And again, I'll hold down the shift so I have a perfectly uh, vertical line and hit escape and get the other member of our crosshair. Again, I'll hold down shift so it's perfectly horizontal and I'll click the cursor key. With my cursor, I'll drag a box over that highlighting the entire crosshair and I'll go to the top of the screen and hit this group selection. Now when I move this, it'll move the entire 
uh, cross here that I just moved and I'll move it near the center of the circle and you'll see that my white arrow turns into a, like a little uh, sideways X. That means I'm now in the center of that circle. And we'll go up to the settings here. And I think these settings look good. I'll change the pass count to one. And I'll load up a piece of paper into the honeycomb. We'll start out by homing the machine. And I'll navigate over to the move tab and I'm going to change the move distance to 25 millimeters. And I'm just going to move the laser somewhere out over the work area. And the first thing I'm going to do is set my focus height. This is a, an Atomstack A20 Pro and it uses this handy height gauging key. Just simply lower the laser module on top and slide the key out and now the laser is perfectly in focus. In Lightburn, I can highlight this entire box and we'll see right here is a small cross here with a dot in it. That's the actual location of the laser. And so I'm going to put this right on top. And when I frame the, the project out, you'll see that I'm over the paper the entire time. And I'm all set. I'm going to turn the air assist on at a relatively low amount. The air assist kit that comes with this machine does have a variable uh, air supply pump that comes with it. And with my safety goggles on, I'm ready to cut this out. And here is our paper template that we can center over our work and then we can index our laser to be directly centered over that. And there's a reason why I showed cutting out the template first because we know we've got a perfectly round uh, circle with the exact center. So I'll place this in the work area. Again, for this one, I only need just a couple uh, magnets to hold this in place. That should do. And this is a really neat tool in Lightburn. It's located under laser tools and it's called Center Finder. And it starts this little wizard up automatically and it says move the laser head to a point outside of the circle. And here they're talking about this purplish color. So I'm going to navigate over to the move tab and manually move the laser uh, over to basically about 12 o'clock on our template that we just cut out. I'm also going to turn the fire button on. That way I can see this, uh, I call it the flashlight, this low intensity light uh, that I can see where the laser location is. Now that we're close to location, I change the distance move from 25 millimeters down to five. Just gives me greater control. I'm almost there. I'm going to switch that over to one millimeter. And what I want is just the very outside of that laser beam, that flashlight to hit that circle. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'll click the button, set first circle point, and it will tell us to move somewhere about the seven or eight o'clock position. With the laser just on the edge of the circle, I'll click the button here, and I'll go almost directly across, but slightly down. What we're trying to do is make this angle here as wide as possible to draw the most accurate circle diameter. And this small move distance of one millimeter that I'm using, I'm just using one millimeter just to keep this video moving along, but I'd encourage you on your projects to spend as much time as needed. The more time you spend here, the better your project will be centered up. And I'm right on the very edge of our template circle and I'm going to click set third circle button. And it brings up this screen here. This is currently where the laser is located at. I'm going to click on add guide circle to the project and jog to the center. And we'll see that our laser beam 
within about one millimeter is exactly in the middle of that circle. Why is it off about one millimeter? Because my distance that I had when I was finding the outside edge was only about the resolution of one millimeter. We'll see in the light burn work area that that wizard automatically drew this orange uh, circle for us. If we move over to cuts and layers, we'll see that is a tool layer just for framing. We can check out how well this really worked by hitting the circular frame button and watch it trace the outside of the circle. And it's just barely touching that outside of that paper. I don't think I could ever line that up by hand without using this tool or cutting a paper template like that and placing it on top of the project. Two different ways to center your projects up underneath the laser. I've removed any of the feet that were on the back side of the mirror along with any stickers. This back side, the coated side of the mirror, is the side that we will be engraving from. The back is clean. The only thing to do now is to clean the front side of the mirror with some window cleaner. It's important to get any fingerprints, dust, or residue off the front side of the mirror. We of course are lasering from this side, but some of that laser beam energy will pass through the glass and hit this front side, and anything that's on this side might inadvertently cause engraving. When placing the mirror into the work area, I don't want to lay it flat on the surface. I actually want to space that up a little bit. That's where I grab my favorite magnetic strips, and I put a couple of those down. I'm going to put three of them down, and I want to hit just the very outside of uh, the mirror just to stand that off. I'll use some more magnets, double stacked, and I'll put those in various areas to kind of box this in so that the mirror cannot shift around during the engraving process. I'm going to go and use the paper template method just simply because some people might be using a software package that may or may not have that find center feature. I've added two pieces of blue painter's tape simply because the cooling fan on my laser module is very powerful and when I move that over that sheet of paper, it will have a tendency to float that paper around. Inside light burn, I'll manually index the laser until it's perfectly centered over the crosshair of the template. Before moving it to the exact center, I want to make sure that the laser is in focus. If I don't have the laser in focus, the beam might appear as rectangular or slightly uh, distorted. So now I've got the best possible uh, pointer light from the laser to find the center of this template. And that's just about the center of the template. I'm going to remove the template. The next step is to grab the artwork. I'm just going to drag that down to light burn and just drop it into the work area. It's a neat way rather than going through the menu system. I measured this piece of glass at about 114 millimeters in diameter. So I'd like the artwork piece to be a little bit smaller than that. With the padlock selected, I'm going to change the diameter of our project to 110 millimeters. I'll just drag and drop that over that point where the laser is currently at. Perfectly centered. I'm defaulted on this black zero zero layer. I'm going to change that to red zero two. And I'm going to do the engraving as a line rather than a fill engraving here uh, because I want this to go very quickly on a small mirror this fine detail shows up really nice and it cuts our project time of the laser working from, you know, five to 20 minutes, depending on how intricate the design is. It'll do this design in about one to two minutes. I'm going to change the speed to about 120 and my max power. I'm using a 20 watt laser. I'm going to go at 65% and all I'm trying to do is laser through the back coating of this, uh, the glass mirror. With those settings in, I'm going to frame the project. 
and it should trace just the very, very outside of the mirror. That looks pretty good. Given the short amount of time I spent centering the laser over the workpiece, going through our pre-laser checklist, the work is secured in the work area. I set the focus and I'm going to turn the air assist on just a low amount. You might be able to hear that slight hiss. I'm going to put the goggles on and before I start, I can come up to the top of the screen and see that this total time will be about one minute, 52 seconds. This really does go that quick. And this is running in real time. Our project's complete. Here is the first look. And wow, look at that. That is really spectacular. And I'm looking around the outside edge and it looks pretty well centered too, given how little time I spent centering up the laser on that. And I really like using this method of standing the mirror up off of the work area. We didn't have any accidental uh, engraving come in on the front side of this mirror. And with boxing it in with these extra magnets, I can now load another blank into the work area and hit start. And I know everything is centered up. Of course, I had moved the foot pads off and the sticker, but I can keep on doing this. I can make one mirror or I could make five mirrors or as many as I'd like for this project. Just a few wipes with a damp cloth with some alcohol is all that's needed to clean the backside of the mirror off before painting. And the last finishing steps on this, now that the paint is dry, is I did clean up the outside edge of the mirror. I just sprayed across the top and cleaned up the edges. And the very last thing I need to do is apply some little felt pads. And here's the big reveal. I really like the way that this looks and how it turned out. Let's get a full view of that. And when I look around the outside edge, it does look like it's very well centered all the way around with how little time I spent perfecting that. I'm sure yours will turn out much better if you spend just a little bit more time than I did. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you tried this project at home. I'd love to hear in the comments down below how your project turned out. If this project is interesting to you, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. Doing any number of those things really helps this channel grow, and it's a great way to connect content like this with people like you. Until next time, have fun, be safe, and most of all, be creative.